Hola y aloha, everyone. Welcome to our show. We're the voice for the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce Hawaii, where our aim is to provide an inclusive platform that celebrates diversity, fosters connections, and celebrates the voice of our Latino business owners here in Hawaii. Um, and we want to thank ThinkTech for giving us this opportunity and this platform to amplify our Latino business voice here in, in Hawaii. And we also have other events that help us achieve our mission, um, like our upcoming Latino Business Expo in October, on October 7th. And we also have a Taste of Mana, which is a fundraiser that we have scheduled for November 4th. So stay tuned for that. Follow us on our um, social media and website. <laughs> I'm Barbara DeLuca, president and um, founder of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce Hawaii. And my lovely co-host is going to introduce our guest today. And we're going to have a great show for you. Hola, aloha. I am Marisol Ruiz, and I am the vice president of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And we are so excited. Our guest today is Ipolito Rivera from uh, RIP Fitness. He is the uh, founder and CEO. We have tons to talk about. Um, I'm going to introduce him. We're going to get started with him telling us a little bit about himself personally first, and then we're going to get into all the wonderful, fantastic things that RIP Fitness is doing here in the community. So without further ado, Hip, would you please uh, talk to us hey. about <laughs> Hola y aloha. Hi, familia. Um, my name is Cibelita Rivera. I was born in the Dominican Republic, um, got to the U.S. in 1998. My parents brought us over here. I was uh, living in New Jersey. Uh, until 2012, I joined the military for about 10 years, decided that I wanted to get out of the military and open up a business, and uh, RIP Fitness was born from there. So RIP Fitness, um, what does R1P stand for? R1P stands for Reborn in Paradise. Mm -hmm. We came up with that name because we wanted you to leave your old self behind, kind of like your old self has to die in order for you to be reborn. So you could be reborn a new person. So that was the name that we came up with, you know, be reborn and especially here in paradise. I like had, it. You, had you ever had a, a business before? Was this your first venture? And then why the fitness world, right? So many people are doing restaurants and marketing, you know, why fitness? And is this the first one? I had different ventures before, um, other businesses that I've invested on, but nothing that I've started myself. Um, and fitness just gave me the ability to truly help people and see the results and see, see the change in people. You know, I wanted something that was rewarding in, in a sense. And I wanted to see people's life change. I wanted to see people's, I saw a lot of, um, stress in the military. I saw a lot of lonely people. I saw a lot of people gaining weight. I saw a lot of issues that were very, um, that they weren't being solved in the military. So what I was like, I wanted to do something to change that. So it, it, I, I want, I wanted to see, we first started, it wasn't even supposed to be a business. It was just supposed to be helping those that were in need. So we started just doing free workouts. And from there, that's where the business was born. Can you elaborate a little bit on that, the, the free workouts? Because I've met people throughout the islands that are now that you have a physical brick and mortar gym, which is an amazing place. I love it. Anytime I talk to somebody, I'm always, you know, promoting the gym. But what is this that you were doing before that came just from a space of, of love and sharing with people? What were you doing? Because I've heard some stories from people that are like, hey, I was out this place. So share a little bit about that. Yeah, so to give you a little background about that, um, as soon as I touched down on the island, which I believe was 2019, early 2019, um, we I wanted to do workouts just to help out. I was already a fitness instructor in the military, um, but people needed the extra help. So I was like, you know what, on the weekends, uh, while everybody is free and off, let's get together in Ford Island uh, where the memorial for Pearl Harbor is at. We will all get together there uh, and we just started working out like as friends. And then they started inviting more friends and more friends until the group outgrew Ford Island. And we're like, okay, well now we got civilians that want to come and join. We have all different people that want to come into this group. So we ended up moving it to the beach. We started doing it at the beach and it got bigger and bigger at the beach. Once we saw that the community just kept growing and we were like, okay, what are we going to do to shift this 
into an actual business because we weren't charging anything at the, at the time. So we ended up doing the merchandise. That's where the Rip Fitness merchandise was born. Um, once the merchandise came in, they truly went into people. The, the community just went and supported it. Everything that we put out, they loved it. They supported it and they were buying it. And then we were hit with COVID. Once COVID came in, we had mm-hmm. to shift more into the online process of it. Once COVID started dying down, we started getting back together and doing the workouts at a smaller scale. But then again, we it just kept growing. So we're like, okay, we have to find the facility. We ended up looking for a facility. We went to a couple of places, came here to White Pahu. We ended up going to the place across the street and we got uh, we. We got outbid by a construction company since we didn't have any history or anything like that. A construction company kind of beat us for that building, which was 5,000 square feet, and it was twice as much as the rent of what we pay now. Um, We kept circling around looking, and we ended up looking literally across the street from the place that we went the first time and ended up finding a 10,000 square foot facility for half of the price, and we got that one, so... Um, yeah, that's how it was a blessing. <laughs> it was amazing. You know, um, I love the way that you use your space to support the community. Tell us about your sipping shops and how that came to me. The sipping shops were beautiful because we wanted to give, we wanted to find out a way to give back to the community and to bring other local businesses to kind of be part of our community as well. I've always been a firm believer that if you create a community, it has to be large enough so other communities can thrive and live within the community. So I was like, okay, we need to bring other small businesses who were just coming up like us and give them the opportunity to be in front of a public, to be in front of our community and, and different people. So we gave them that platform. And then we wanted something also for our community to just have fun, enjoy, bring the kids. So it is family friendly. Yes. Michael and I are, it's one of our favorite things to do. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, we love, you know, we love just seeing our community in a different aspect. Not only just working out, you know, getting their sweat in, but also enjoying themselves, being with their family and being in a place where they feel comfortable. Right. I, I love your, your sip and shops. And I think it's something to be said when people operate businesses, individuals, when you operate from a space of abundance, right, where you're, it's not, it's so easy for us to get caught up in our own businesses, whether it's your self-employed or your job, right? We can get caught up in the grind and not really think about anybody else because you're trying to just kind of, you know, get through the day and, you know, move on to the next. So when you come from a space of, hey, we're all in this together, let's share. So you're actually, you're sharing your space with these businesses. And when we've gone to your sip and shops, it's, you have food vendors, you have music, you have DJs, you have, you know, they're making bracelets, you have someone making henna, dances. I mean, it's amazing. And, and you give people this platform. And again, it comes from a space of an abundance, from abundance. And when we operate from that space, I think everyone grows naturally. And then you want to be that way as well, right? As a, it's, you know, you, you give back and what is it? The pay it forward. It's kind of the same idea, right? And when a community collectively thinks like that, I think that's when we start to see massive change uh, in community and people start to grow and thrive. What do you think about that? I agree a hundred percent. I love that. I love the way you put that, honestly, because um, not a lot of people uh, can see it from that perspective or understand what's happening. And um, and I love when you can see it, it, it what that it comes from a place of love and a place of abundance. Um, and that if we all start thinking that way, we all start helping each other out and helping other small businesses because tomorrow those small businesses can be the bigger businesses. That you know, so if they come from a platform like that, they would again do the same thing for those other smaller businesses who are coming up and and help the the entire goal is to help each other out and continue building on top of the foundation that we've already laid right now so that's one aspect of it right is your your sipping shop so kind of to just build off of that uh you know, sharing and growing and thriving, you know, but at the end of the day, I mean, real talk, a lot of business owners and a lot, unfortunately, in our Latino community, I'm just going to say it, you know, we're not always fully, fully supporting one another. So it takes like a mental shift, right, to come from that space. So what is it that you're also doing? Because I've heard of something like a mastermind, which is huge, right tell us a little bit about that what you're doing and the how that was born and what is your mission with that 
No, the, the Mastermind is another amazing project that we came up with. Um, my friend Maria Arrieta, uh, she was able to, uh, we were able to get together and kind of come up with a plan on how to level up the people around us. Those who are truly focused, those who want to get to that next level and, and don't have the opportunity, how to make that mental shift. Um, so we decided to implement everything that we know uh, as business owners, as the industries that we've been working in for all of these years, we've kind of gathered so much information um, and so much knowledge that now we've been able to uh, pass it down and implement and change and make those mental changes that are really needed in order to level up. In order to level up, there has to be change. In order to, pro in order to have progression, you have to have some sort of change and change is uncomfortable. Right, so we want to show people that, yes, it might be uncomfortable, but you're progressing. Each time that you're getting in that uncomfortable zone, you're progressing. I love comparing them to the gym. In the gym, you come in and you're literally breaking down your muscles every day. And then you have to recover and the muscles will grow. Same aspect when it comes to a business, when it comes to a project, you are going to be, you're going to find areas that are going to be hard, that are going to break you up. but if you can see through them, you will level up to that next to that next step. So we want to shift the community's mentality on, okay, what is it that, that, that real growth looks like? What is it that real opportunity looks like? What is it that working in abundance looks like? What is it that getting away from any limitations that we've been set? What does that look like? So the mastermind encompasses all of that. Right. We, we uh -huh. like Maria. So we're also partnering with her, with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and we met her at your sip and shops, and we've done business with her because um, we're all in the real estate industry as well, right, Marisol? So um, she's actually helping us um, on the committee to plan the Latino Business Expo, which is going to be, you know, the event uh, that we bring in and support our Latino business owners of, of all different industries at Aloha Towers. She's going to moderate a panel, and I, you, uh, you're going to be one of our guests, along with uh, Mercado de la Raza, who's also been a guest on our talk show, and um, the Taqueria. So, you know, we're, we're supporting our, our business Latino community and sharing our culture. It's Hispanic Heritage Month, so we have, a, you know, entertainment scheduled. Uh, we're using the stage out there. It's going to be a great event. And speaking of, uh, you were talking about um, El Ranchero So Hip. So you're not just the gym, right? <laughs> you, <laughs> you do you do outreach. You have your sip and shops. You have your masterminds. But you've also brought out, and I've seen, and you know, I don't know much about it, so maybe you could share a little bit. I've seen that you've collaborated with um, El Ranchero. You brought out like DJs, literally like full on. Uh, events and you know concerts out at El Ranchero from who did you fly out somebody from the Dominican Republic I think a DJ right yes we flew what? out Jay Adonis from the Dominican Republic um we are currently uh partnered up with El Ranchero with their Latin nights every Saturday night um they do a Latin night is uh hosted at El Ranchero but ran by Rip Fitness um most of our guys our dance instructors um run that night they do, they teach classes, bachata and salsa at El Ranchero for free during that night. And then what they do is that the community that they built already in the gym that comes to dance and that enjoys dancing, they have like that free, that basically that Saturday to come out and show the moves that, they, that they've learned. So we've been partnered up with El Ranchero since I believe October of last year. I mean, we've been doing these events there. So every a quarter, we try to bring a different artist, a different DJ, different um, and sort of entertainment for the community. So speaking of those events with El Ranchero, um, Hip, how had you done this before? Like, had you promoted events, had uh, salsa nights before? Is it something that, how did it grow? Um, and Because it does take a lot of work to when we put on events or Buenos Dias breakfast, I mean, a lot goes on and we, you know, we have our, our 30 guests, yeah, some, yeah. you know, we have our little committees, something like this is huge, bringing out DJs or having people show up on Friday nights. Like, how did you get involved in that? How yeah, was it born? So, funny enough, um, while I was uh, deployed in the USS Carl Benton, uh, in the Middle East, this is an aircraft carrier. Um, I hosted bachata like uh, nights on the flight deck or and there's a flight deck and then there's a below deck. 
in that below deck we're able to do basically uh events big events and stuff like that so we hosted like latin night uh latin dancing bachata and salsa uh and during that time i i kind of got a little feel for it nothing too crazy because you couldn't fly anybody in but gathering the community together um and i think that with all of these events it's already having a community makes it that much more easier i don't really have a background in um bringing out artists and stuff like that but once i put my mind to something i make it happen so i we wanted to see the dj the community wanted to see the dj so we moved all the pieces that we possibly can and brought them out here yes there was so many road bumps in that <laughs> process but overall we got them here we did the party everybody enjoyed the event and but it turned out to be fantastic so i i gained a lot of experience from it yes that experience set you up for where you're at now um i see you're in your south side bachata room right now so um i know you guys get you have classes there at night and you've i was looking at your website and you guys have also participated in a competition can you tell us about that oh yeah competitions are fantastic they're they're they really show you so much about yourself um with the competition it comes a lot of training dedication consistency it goes from your sleep from how much water you're taking in how much food um your weight and your food and then once there is competition day comes up there's so many different factors that go into it um, a lot of people do it in in many different ways but here what we do is we do it as a team the competition uh the bodybuilding competitions or the bikini competitions they're very isolated sports you go with your coach you participate you're done we come as a team so we look like a collegiate team everybody's wearing the same suit everybody we have the music on oh yeah you're rocking up. the rip fitness gear yes we show up and we show out um, right that's how we do it um and we also that we brought to these competitions we brought the salsa and bachata performances which happened at the competition which never have happened in any competition oh, have fun so it gives them an, a, a little bit of our culture and who we are and what we stand for um and we love that because not only are we showcasing the uh, our our best shape and our best physique but we're also showcasing our culture our gym our community and everything that we stand for there that is so cool because you're you you said something about that you know bodybuilding or you know those types of competition can be pretty isolated sport i've watched videos of when you guys did some competitions barbara they come out when it takes a village and i'm telling you when they're up there and they're like competing and you have 20 people in the crowd just going nuts for you and cheering you on and singing and i mean it is such a it has to be a beautiful feeling i was just overjoyed watching it and i can't imagine what it feels like being on that stage by yourself and knowing that you literally have a village right there backing you up the whole time because it is it's extraordinarily difficult i mean you know maria competed and to see that transformation was unbelievable and it's beautiful Yes. but it does take a village <laughs> yeah and you know with the crowd hyping you up and you're out there dancing and everything you can't help but want to vote for you <laughs> <laughs> i saw that you guys recently had a barbie car wash on on your um, instagram page so what, what was that about so the barbie car wash was pretty cool because we did um some of our uh, athletes here are do are going to be modeling or have some sort of uh, some sort of show coming up um and what we did was they they needed a fundraiser so we're like why not just host a car wash here um mm -hmm. and we try to support the community in whichever way we can and this was one of the ways that we were able to just get them to kind of like hey this is a, this is a way to get your tickets out and do something cool barbie right now is killing it all over oh, yeah <laughs> it's trending everywhere so oh, yeah. super cool to do a car wash that was barbie theme uh car wash we need to do that for the chamber marisol <laughs> yes are you gonna dress up like a barbie barbara <laughs> <laughs> no we're gonna bring the real fitness people in <laughs> yeah <laughs> is there anything else in the works that you have going on that you want to share we have a lot of things in the works um we have mm -hmm. right now our spartan program that's coming up in august 7th um i know that that's going to be a huge one that's usually where we have a, a, a 
a group of individuals who sign up uh, to kind of change their lives. Um, this is where we see the most changes. It's about three months long. They're training Monday through Friday. Um, and this is the most popular program here at the gym. Uh, and we, we love when that program kicks off because you start seeing people change drastically from we've had uh, clients here that not only have they changed physically, and let's say lost a ton of weight or gained muscle, but also to get off med medications like high blood pressure medication, sugar, like those kind of things gave me goosebumps from there. When I'm getting those kind of stories back, I'm like, wow, like that's we're really impacting somebody's life to the point where they don't have to, where they they don't have to take medication. I was like, that's huge. That's something that I, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting to hear that. And it kind of gave me a reality check. Like, wait, there's people that are really needing this for life, for health, for their changes. So that was big. That's one yeah. of the things that's coming up now, August 7th. Are there a limited number of if somebody wanted to sign up for the Spartan program? Because it sounds, again, that's kind of a, a a group effort, right? It isn't like an individual one-on-one -on -one training. It's it's with a group. Is there like limited number of seats to sign up? Is there a deadline? Can you talk a little bit about that? There is a limited number of seats because uh, we want to make sure that the groups are not too big for each, for each individual trainer. We want to keep the groups no more than five individuals we want the, the quality of the of the workout and the training to not be affected by quantity um the deadline for for that uh individual for that one that's coming up now on august 7th is this friday that would be the last uh uh the last time that you're able to sign up um and we currently have about i, I believe like five spots left and our limit is usually about 30 individuals total how about your uh beach day i know you guys just had one recently and you go out on the beach and you guys are out there dancing and celebrating like let's talk about that, Is that, every how last, about that? Yeah. yeah every last friday of mm -hmm. the month we usually have the dance team go out to the beach um teach the classes that they were going to teach in the studio out there and then invite anybody at the beach that wants to enjoy the classes join them as well so we do that every last friday of the month um and then we usually have a big beach day for the entire community, um, at least once a quarter, have them come out there. We do a big beach day. We do a workout. We kind of go back to the roots where we first started and we do a free workout for the community and have people come out, barbecue, have a good day, bring their dogs, kids, everything. I also want to ask about, I know you guys, you're not just a gym, you offer dance lessons. So let's say that I'm not a member of the gym, but I want to learn how to bachata. Is that something that somebody can do or do they only have to be a member of the gym to be able to participate? And what does that look like? So you can be uh, a member of the gym and participate. You don't have to be a member of the gym. You can participate. There's drop-in rates. So for example, there's a drop-in rate to any other classes that you want to do and try them out. There's different memberships that you can do that are just specifically for dance, just specifically for the gym or for both. So whichever choice you want, we will accommodate. Where can they find you? Where are you located? And what, what's the best way to follow you? So we are located in Waipahu, uh, right by Don Quixote. Um, mm -hmm. We are um, about two minutes walk walking distance from the train station that just opened up. So if you take the train station to the Waipahu station, you're able to find our gym within two minutes. You can find us in Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Google, um, any of these. Right. You're able to find us immediately. Well, our most active social media channel is Instagram. We're constantly putting out information there. We're constantly... Uh, uploading the next events what's coming up so if you want to stay in touch with everything that's happening at the gym currently and what's coming up instagram will be the best channel you're doing a great job on instagram how many followers are you at now oh we yeah nineteen thousand eight hundred right now uh -huh. uh, twenty thousand just say twenty thousand <laughs> <laughs> we grew and about growing. 10k this year alone so <laughs> good job Wow, you went from working out at the beach for free to, you know, 20,000 followers and all these events and keep up the good work. We're, we're happy to support your business and be part of the community. And thank you for joining us in our community events. And, you know, we're, we're doing the same thing out there and giving a voice to our Latino business owners.
No, I want to thank you guys for actually just giving me the opportunity to be here. I want to thank you for thinking of me, for both being supporting, for supporting the gym, for both being here um, and being part of this community and always adding to this community and always looking for ways to, to help the Latino community grow. Um, what you guys are doing is incredible and um and it, it doesn't go on seed you know we really we really are all so grateful with the work that's being done and with the projects that are coming up um just like you said i know that the business expo is coming up on the 7th of october i believe it's, it's on the 7th mm -hmm. of october yeah. um, and i'm excited for that and i know that the both of you most likely will be joining us on our next mastermind so we are going to be talking about that but I'm, I'm so happy to be a part of what you guys are doing and having you guys a part of what we're doing as well and what we're building and what events do you have anything coming up in the next you know 30 days do you have any any events coming up we have the sip and shop i believe that's going to be on the 18th or the third friday of the month okay um, we have okay an event in town uh, this Saturday, August 5th. Uh, I, I believe it's like the Waikiki. Oh, Some, yeah. One of the festivals in Waikiki. It's like the street festival in the main. Right. That's going to be fun. We usually bring our dancers out, our merch, and we usually play dominoes out there. It's, I it's saw that one. Yeah, it looks like you're playing Mahjong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the 12th, we're supporting a local um volleyball team and we're going to be doing a volleyball tournament down um oh, in, well, fun. on so queen's like, beach which one what is it called queen's beach in waikiki where they have the volleyball <laughs> set up oh yeah yeah, yeah. We're, we're, awesome. we're going to be the, the the sponsor for that tournament coming up on the 12th so that'll be fun that's exciting but well, thank you so much yeah i think when we all put our minds together and we again going back to abundance and support one another promote one another help one another level up right that's what you're saying earlier um we're going to thrive and grow together so it's really exciting thank you so much for um giving us your time we know you're busy um uh, training everyone over there right <laughs> and, um speaking of events we do have an upcoming buenos dias breakfast networking event we have it every other month at the taqueria so the next one is going to be august 8th and we're going to be discussing wealth builders education so basically it's just changing your mindset from a saver to an investor and setting up your family for generational wealth it's going to be a great event i've been to one of their seminars before and um ricky niguez is presenting he has a nonprofit, and he's one of our members and um, our next Hola y Aloha talk show, we do these every other week. And our next guest is going to be Nancy Ortiz, and she's a community organizer as well. And we're going to be discussing her two-day event that she has planned in October for Hispanic Heritage Festival. So I just, you know, this is a great platform for us to all get together and talk about all of our events. And um, this, thank you, Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you for watching our show. Thank you, Marisol, for co-hosting. And thank you, Hip, for joining us. Um, this is Barbara DeLuca. And catch us next time. Adios and aloha, everybody. Adios, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.